Yeah? Yeah. All right, my number two is Earth Defense Force 2025 on the PlayStation 3. Good shit. Uh, it's also available on Xbox 360. Um, did you play 2017? I did, yeah, not that much of it. I probably played about 10 levels of it. Okay. Um, I mean, yeah. they, they have a very, they, you know, they, they're cult. They've got a very, very avid cult fan mm -hmm. base. And if you're not aware, absolutely everything about. 2025 as it was with 2017 because there's not a whole lot of difference in them well there are differences but the brought yeah it's very much the sequel to 2017 um everything from the animation to the frame rate to the way the sounds mixed to the music to the clipping with sort of uh, you know npcs clipping in and out of buildings and whatnot the draw distance the sound bites that keep repeating all of it is almost deliberately low rent mm. um but as with 2017, uh, this actually adds to the appeal quite a bit. Um, first off, the dialogue. The dialogue is really quite amusing. After playing for the first hour of me playing it, I looked and I realised that I'd made about half an A4 page of notes and it was just quotes. Oh, yeah. Because I was laughing the whole time. Because they do this weird thing where they take a question or a statement and a response and they just mix them up. So you have one question and one response, and they won't match up to what the grunts are saying in the film. It's, it's hilarious. And the dialogue with all the officials talking about it, um, you know, the giant insects are back. That's impossible. These giant insects are stronger than ever before. You're supposed to be trained in fighting giant insects. I mean, the dialogue's ridiculous. Um, but there's this kind of weird fever dream insanity to it. Now, some, someone saying something as poncy as what I just said, if you're not enjoying the game... It's not going to be a f weird fever dream in Santa. It's just going to be a fucking shit game. <laughs> so if you're not enjoying the game, it's going to be another thing that you hate about it. But I was really enjoying the game much as I did uh, 2017. Um, it appears to all uh, completely ignore the existence of Insect Armageddon, uh, which I didn't realise it, but it was developed outside Japan. It wasn't even done by Sandbox. Did you play Insect Armageddon? No, I've only played 2017. Okay, yeah, because playing 2025, I was playing it thinking, uh, I could have sworn the last one looked a hell of a lot better than this. Right. Um, but this is a direct sequel to 2017, and it seems to ignore Insect Armageddon, except for the classes. The, the, the class system's kind of the same. So the Ranger is like the old-style EDF sort of ground-based troop. The Wing Diver can fly. There's this Air Raider class, which is kind of for beginners, but it's completely useless in, uh, in single-player. You can just spawn vehicles and set targets for airstrikes and stuff. It's something that you know a very young child could sort of play along uh, right. cooperatively. But you never. But don't don't. If you're playing alone, don't pick that class. And then there's the fencer, which is a heavily armoured uh, guy, but very very slow and really hard to master. Kind of sort of difficult to manoeuvre. So it, it's the class that's for people who've smashed through it with the with the other classes. Basically, it's like the hardcore option. Um, it's yeah. It, the, the appeal of these games remains the same. Do you like Carnage? It delivers more Carnage than most games feel comfortable with. At first, I was a bit worried because one of the great pleasures is leveling an entire building with one rocket uh, or a couple of rockets. And at first, that's hard to do. But as you unlock, uh, there's something like 700 weapons in this apparently. Right. So you're always unlocking all of these weapons. You know, hundreds for, for, for each class. And yeah, it's. It's it's the same exact. I mean, if you didn't like the other games, this is not going to float your boat. Um, there's no scores. I didn't even realise it. It's not even a score attack shooter. There's not even scores. There's not really a sophisticated upgrade system. I mean, there's progression, but it's not an upgrade system. It's just carnage. It's just kill everything, it's destroy uh, a planet, and listen to some ridiculous dialogue while you're doing it. <laughs> um, the loading times are like pretty harsh um, for a game as sort of technically inept as this. Um, it's also far too easy to accidentally hit yourself. You know, if it, if it, something that happens way too frequently is this: you see a bit of scenery and it's not really very near you, and you fire a rocket and you it hit the scenery and it kills you. Um, that happens a little bit too often, and you know, if you're playing on hard and you're near the end of a level, boy oh boy, does that get old fast. But um, mm. yeah, th aside from that, it's really entertaining. It's kind of in what you know, it's completely unapologetic about the fact that it's just carnage, 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 carnage. Do you like carnage? There's I plenty like over here. Well, I mean, this, yeah. It's a shame about the performance issues. I mean, there's, there's, oh, I should mention the, there's split screen co op, which works right. There's also a mysterious versus mode where you're one on one, and it just, it just <laughs> completely doesn't work. 
Um, and oh, there's a, a really good lobby system uh, for online four-player co-op, which is the way the game should be played. There's not, I mean, it's it's fun on your own, but it's all about uh, playing on co-op, whether it's split screen uh, or uh, or sort of uh, four-player online. Uh, it's, it's really good, mindless, technically inept, brilliant crap. 